really matters? That might be the most important question you can ask. So let's talk about it. Welcome to What Really Matters podcast. I'm Karen Wyatt, and in this podcast, we share the spiritual journey, the everyday journey of trying to become our best selves and trying to live our best lives in a world that is often crazy and makes no sense to us and also creates a lot of stress and a lot of challenges for us to go through. So today I want to talk about the lotus blossom and why we need the darkness. You might remember in the last couple of episodes, I've talked a little bit about having darkness around me, feeling I had been feeling for several weeks, this sense of heaviness and darkness all around me that I couldn't quite describe or define or even understand why it was there or where it came from. So I talked a little bit about how to cope during those times when we're in the darkness, but we don't exactly know why. It's quite interesting because I eventually came to realize in the days since I did the last recording that some of the darkness or probably all of the darkness I was feeling actually began around the anniversary of my father's death, which is May 11th. And so it's it's kind of funny that I didn't realize that or recognize it when I was in the midst of the darkness, that it actually had to do with the anniversary reaction of grief around my father's death. Partly, I think it's because it's been 32 years since my father died by suicide. That's a long, long time. And so I often imagine in my head that I've moved pretty far through grief and that I don't really experience it or encounter it in the same way I used to. But I have to admit, that's what was happening for me. And I really just didn't recognize it. I somehow had forgotten that there will always be a sense of grief around the anniversary of my dad's death and around other occasions as well. And it's kind of silly for me to even think that it wouldn't be there. And also just that I didn't recognize it in the moment, though I think many times that's how it is. We go through dark times that we don't understand and can't explain. And it's only when we're coming out of them and we're in a little bit more light that we can look back and really understand what was happening at that time. So I now realize grief was a big part of the darkness that surrounded me. But also that I think that I'm going through a time of change right now. I think many of us are as we're coming out of the pandemic with a lot of uncertainty, not sure what's coming next or what will happen next. But we may also feel a need, a deep desire for some sort of change to happen in our lives. We don't want to go back to where we were before the pandemic began. We know that something needs to be different in how we live day to day how we think, what we do, who we're with, maybe even where we live. And so I think this is a a time of unsettling and a time of transition. So it's important that we all be mindful of that, be on the lookout for little clues and symbols and synchronicities that will help us see where we're meant to make changes, where we're headed, where we need a little bit more growth, but also be gentle with ourselves and definitely not judge the darkness when it comes over us. And so I want to read to you a David White poem that just really struck me as I have been working through my old grief about my my father's death and also some new perhaps curiosity and even concern about what's next, what's coming. So this poem is called The Well of Grief and again it's by David White. Those who will not slip beneath the still surface on the well of grief turning down through its black water to the place we cannot breathe, 
We'll never know the source from which we drink, the secret water, cold and clear, nor find in the darkness glimmering the small round coins thrown by those who wished for something else. I love the imagery of this poem and the idea that we actually have to willingly sink into the darkness because there are coins there for us to find and there actually is a source of of water within the darkness, a source of nourishment within that darkness. So we have to be willing to allow ourselves to go through the dark times, even though we don't know why they're coming, even though we don't really like it. We don't enjoy or like the feeling of darkness when it comes over us, but it's so important for us. And also, as I as I was contemplating this episode and what, what I wanted to say about why we need the darkness, the image of the lotus blossom came to mind. And I want to tell you a little bit more about lotuses, the lotus flower, um, so you'll see just how perfect this, this lotus blossom is as a symbol for the journey we're on and what we're trying to do here. And so you probably already know that lotuses grow in water, but particularly muddy water. Their roots uh, attach in mud, and that's where they begin to grow. Their stems grow up through the murky water of a pond or a marsh somewhere. Then Their leaves open and float on top of the water, and finally the blossoms open. And in spite of the fact that they have grown up from mud, when the blossoms open, they are perfectly clean and pure and beautiful. It's a gorgeous flower, stunning in its beauty. So lotuses have been around forever. In fact, some people have said they, they've been around for 145 million years that lotuses actually survived the Ice Age. This is according to some researchers that they found evidence of lotus seeds from, from before the Ice Age. So they have been um, a fixture in our landscape f- for forever, for, you know, almost as long as there has been life on this planet. And they've been an important symbol for many different societies. Uh, they found hieroglyphs from ancient ancient Egypt that showed lotus blossoms with next to important priests and pharaohs. Many Buddhist statues and much Hindu art depicts lotus blossoms. There are many gods and goddesses in Hinduism that are shown holding a lotus blossom. Buddha is often depicted sitting on a lotus blossom. So these mysterious flowers and the way they bloom and grow have been important to many different cultures and religions. They're found uh, all across the eastern area of our our planet the from Russia to Australia from China to Iran but they can grow here anywhere that there's mud and apparently the seeds of the lotus can survive up to thousands of years even without water so if an area where lotuses had been growing, they, they talked about some floodplains where the habitat was completely wiped out for decades. And as soon as they were able to return the, the areas to its normal, um, normal marshy, marshiness, <laughs> uh, lotus blossoms were one of the first things to grow there because the seeds had remained in the ground and when the conditions were right, they grew once again. So it's interesting that lotus, the lotus petals of the lotus flower, because as we've said, they grow up through the mud and through dirty water, but they have a special waxy coating on the outside that sheds the water, which is how the petals are able to remain perfectly clean and pristine when they blossom. And so the lotus blossom, also another really interesting thing, is that the blossoms emerge from the water every morning bloom during the day, and then they submerge in the evening and go back under the water again. And so this is a really beautiful symbol of 
life and death and rebirth, that these blossoms disappear in the darkness at nighttime and then reemerge in the daytime. And it's such a great reminder that in sometimes our sleep, our nighttime, our darkness is a natural part of our cycle of life and death and rebirth. We have to be willing to accept the darkness and the dark times as part of that cycle, because that's where the growth happens. That's where we get nourished and enriched during the dark times, in the darkness, in the mud, down in the depths of ourselves. That's the bottom of the well where we actually end up finding the coins and where we actually discover the richness of what our lives are all about. So like the lotus blossom, it's essential that we be able to go down into our own depths whenever we're asked to do that, whenever we're called to do it. And one of the issues that I've had for a long time with some new age spirituality that I hear talked about is a desire to avoid darkness. And I hear this in uh, when people talk about the law of attraction, that we should be avoiding using negative words, we should avoid anything that seems like darkness. We need to focus only on the positive. And I have a friend right now who's in the in the process of going through cancer uh, and a recurrence of cancer who has decided only to allow positive things in his life. And he refuses to think about or be reminded of anything that to him seems negative. But honestly, Going into the darkness, which which gets defined as negative, is one of the best ways we have of actually healing ourselves. That's where our shadow lives. That's where our wounds are. That's where we retain all of those painful memories of the past that actually weigh us down and that actually take a toll on our immune system if we are not dealing with and healing those old negative memories from the past. It's true that they're negative and it's true that they're dark, but we can only heal them if we face them and if we're willing to go down into the depths of ourselves. If we try to ignore our own shadows, our own past of woundedness, our own history, it will arise within us. The shadow will find a way to express ourselves. And sometimes it expresses itself through physical illness. So I don't mean to say that we cause our own physical illness by avoiding the shadow, because it isn't that simple. And it isn't really a cause and effect situation. We become ill for many, many different reasons. And sometimes it is part of our path. And it's one of the challenges that we're asked to deal with and learn to grow from. But the fact is, if we try to ignore our own darkness, if we try to avoid our own times of darkness and our own submersion, our own plunge down into the depths, as um, uh, David White says, if we avoid slipping beneath the still surface on the well of grief, turning down through the black water to the place we cannot breathe, we have to be willing to go to that place. That is the only way that we will emerge from it healthier and with less baggage that we're dragging around behind us and carrying around, less energetic demand on our immune system and our life force energy to maintain and protect us from old memories. If we're not willing to look at our own shadow, then our subconscious mind and our body's energy gets used to repress the shadow so that we don't have to think about it and don't have to feel the pain of it. That energy could have been used to sustain our health, to invigorate us, to give us vitality, and to even inspire transformation and growth. I understand totally the mindset that says, I don't want anything that might bring about fear uh, in my life. 
And as my my friend is doing, he has been rejecting any person who might talk to him in a way that he considers negative, who might ask him to consider what if things don't go the way he wants it to? What if, if his condition continues to worsen? what might happen or what does he need to think about or what other things could he work on? He refuses it because he has decided that that kind of thinking will make him sicker. But I believe it's actually the opposite, that he's depleting his own body's energy in the effort to suppress and and hide his own darkness. Now, He's making the interpretation that darkness only exists outside of him and he's not going to allow it in. But that mindset is what is preventing him to see his own rich darkness within where he could be spending a little time every day and learning and growing. This is a problem in our entire society. It's, a, it's actually normal for us humans to want to avoid our own darkness. And we end up projecting it onto others when we do that. And that's happening right now in our polarized society. People are really angry at others who are different from them, at other people who think differently and who make different choices in their lives. And all problems in our society are being blamed on someone else. We're spending all of our time finding someone to be angry at, to hate, someone even to try to hurt by the decisions and choices we make instead of going into our own darkness, sitting with it, being still, and allowing ourselves to examine what is happening within us. What do we need to heal so that we ourselves can blossom and grow one day um, and, and grow and open with the sunlight? And it's only, again, after being willing to have our roots in the mud and to have our stems rise up through the dirty water that we can then experience the sunlight and experience the growth and the blossoming that can happen. One of the reasons that I started this podcast is because I believe that we need a new approach to spirituality. I feel that many of our religions have spent a lot of time encouraging people to look at the darkness of the world, but not to go within and look at their own darkness in a healthy and healing sort of way. I know sometimes religions may create a lot of guilt or blame for people who find themselves to be unworthy or to be sinners, but that's also, that's not healthy and it doesn't foster healing in the appropriate way. So I feel that our religions are falling short right now at a time when we really need to have spiritual practices and spiritual awareness in our own lives. I wanted to create this podcast and do some more writing about this idea, a spirituality for those of us who no longer fit in any of the traditional religions that we've been exposed to, those of us who simply cannot find a home there that feels safe or comfortable or nurturing. And we may also not feel comfortable in some of the new age movements that have been offered to us either. We're trying to find a way to work toward growth and transformation without pushing away the negativity or the darkness, being willing to carry our own darkness and examine it within ourselves, to be responsible for our own path of spiritual growth and really for how our lives, how, how we proceed through our lives, to be responsible for whatever whatever comes my way. I'm responsible for how I navigate it and negotiate it. I don't need someone outside of me telling me what's right or wrong. I need to develop my own understanding for me of what is what is right for me and what is wrong for me. I need to understand what my own process is about. I need to understand what I need to heal specifically within me in order to become my best self. So my goal for this podcast is simply to share how this process of growth is going for me and some of the things I'm learning, not because 
I'm trying to create any kind of religion only because I'm just sharing my own pearls of wisdom and hoping that these might be helpful or supportive for you as well. So I wanted to be honest with you about my uh, my lack of awareness of my own darkness when I was talking before and the revelation that came to me, of course, that grief over my dad's death and probably grief also over changes that are happening, having to let go of things that used to be, especially prior to the pandemic, and moving on to to doing things differently and seeing the world differently. And I wanted to give you that image of the lotus blossom so that you can keep that in mind and that if you are in the mud, remember that perhaps you are at the seed stage of the lotus blossom. The seeds haven't quite opened yet in the mud and that the next step will be roots beginning to grow, deepening down into the mud, and then a stem that will start finding its way through the murky water, growing up and up until it reaches the surface of the water where the sunlight's available, and then the leaves will will open and finally the blossom will open. It's all a process and you might be in the mud right now and you might still just be a seed in the mud. But I ask you to consider that this is exactly where you're supposed to be right now and appreciate it, embrace it, go with it and don't be afraid to look within yourself. Don't be afraid to ask what is there that for me to heal, what do I need to look at? What pain am I carrying that I could spend some time with right now? So uh, I have another uh, poem to read by David White. This is called Self Portrait. And um, I'll use it as our kind of our closing poem and then make a few more comments after I read it. So Self Portrait by David White from his poetry book Fire in the Earth. It doesn't interest me if there is one God or many gods. I want to know if you belong or feel abandoned. If you know despair or can see it in others. I want to know if you are prepared to live in the world with its harsh need to change you. If you can look back with firm eyes saying, this is where I stand. I want to know if you know how to melt into that fierce heat of living, falling toward the center of your longing. I want to know if you are willing to live day by day with the consequence of love and the bitter, unwanted passion of your sure defeat. I have heard in that fierce embrace Even the gods speak of God. So this is another poem talking about this, the consequence of love and the falling toward the center of our longing, almost falling into the depths, falling into the deepness and the darkness of our own lives but with so much passion for love that we're willing to face whatever pain comes our way through living our lives with this kind of intensity and with this kind of awareness and with this openness and willingness to experience the pain that may come to us day to day. So my reminder is that when you simplify everything and boil it down to what really matters, It is about love. We really are here to learn how to give and receive love better than we ever have before. It begins with loving ourselves, and part of loving ourselves is accepting our own darkness and being willing from time to time to fall into the depths of that darkness. And then through the process of digging our way out of the mud, learning and growing and becoming new on our way to blossoming once again as a a brand new flower in the sunlight. 
but being willing to do whatever it takes to work our way through the mud and through the murky water until we find the sunlight again. So I'm here on this journey with you. I believe that we're we're here to support one another and to help each other. And I can only see what I'm able to see. I don't have all the answers. I only see from one day to the next what my vision is able to bring me. It's an infinite, vast, and mysterious world out there. And so I expect that I'll probably see something new, a little bit new every day. And I plan to share with you the inspirations I have in hopes that it will just remind you to keep growing yourself, keep welcoming in the darkness when it comes and enjoying and blossoming in the light when it comes and enjoy the entire journey, whatever it is along the way. Know that you're on the right path wherever you are. You are living the life you're meant to live. So until the next time I decide to record one of these episodes, remember, as I just said, that we're here for love. So face your fear and your darkness. Be ready for whatever life brings you next and love every single moment of your precious life here on planet Earth. Bye-bye.